Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is a short analysis, and we are not going to take a lot of time. And I've, I've just felt that we do it as soon as possible. Now, have you heard them say that 1,000 days in politics is like one day in, in, in reality? So, meaning some things that can take 1,000 days can actually uh, be truncated, and we have only one day being at the day that we get the impacts of all that we would have seen in 1,000 days. Just like what he said in the Bible, for God, one day is like 1,000 days. So I'm seeing something going to happen in Mount Kenya. And actually, it is a wake-up call that the Mount Kenya leaders have now come to reality or to terms with. Remember some times back, uh, there, there is this a crop of leaders who are very much against the grain of William Bruto, the likes of Gadoni wa Mushomba. You know, remember that time when Gadoni was trying to say, you guys, do you know exactly what is happening? You know, we are headed to a wrong direction. In fact, she kind of gave an alert to how everything, you know, William Bruto was bringing on board was very punitive and, you know, did not deserve attention of the Mount Kenya leaders. And they repent against they nicknamed her and, and, and you know, tried to derail her quest to stand firm for the Mount Kenya people. But the cows have come home. You know, we are now having everything coming to terms with what is the reality on the ground. And so I was listening to, you know, a section of Mount Kenya leaders saying that they are going to gang against these punitive measures of William Bruto. And they are going to go to the streets. So if you are waiting for that time when things will take a serious dimension, then this is the time. You know, they always say that Mlima Kenya wonekana kumbali. And when it is being seen from afar, whatever they say, whatever they cling unto, if there is a move that they need to champion for, you know, it, it, it must be felt in a cross-sectional manner. And so I was listening to this leader saying, you know, we are going to go to the streets. And one of the areas that they are going to fight for is the taxes, the high taxation, especially that is having a ripple effect on, you know, the cost of living. And they are kind of basing their move on, you know, the, the hike in the fuel prices. And because most of them, if you look at our nation, uh, you will realize that it is Mount Kenya guys who own, you know, the Matatu sector, you know, the public transport, Three quarters, you know, of them are owned by the Mount Kenya guys. So if there is something that they are going to feel as a real pain, you know, it's going to come based on this fuel hike, you know, because it will force them to increase prices, which of course has the repercussion of, you know, people maybe trying to seek other means or just trying to forego, <laughs> you know, it is them who are feeling the real way. So they are going to take it to the street. Remember the other time when, um, you know, Mandamano was was starting on a serious note. You remember what happened in Nyeri? You remember how Nyeri residents um, took to the streets? You remember what happened in Laikipia? You remember what happened in Muranga? So sometimes when we have, uh, you know, this this these issues being so much uh, actually um, heavy on the people, you know, you go past your political alienation and you decide that, you know, we are going to stand for what we actually need to stand for as a people. So what do you think? What is your take on Mount Kenya, uh, actually, people taking it to the streets? What does that mean? You know, uh, there is always that phrase which says, I've always known that, you know, William Bruto has put all his hopes in Mount Kenya. If there is a region that he would not want to uh, get out of his grips is the Mount Kenya community, the Gema community. And so when you're seeing all this, this is coming like, you know, the expectation that they had had been thrown into the dustbin. So the only resolution that they have to make now is to conform to the reality, to come to terms that this is where we are. And the only step that they can take is a step that will make them do the unthinkable if it is going back to the streets, joining, bringing out their voices and saying, you know, we need to 
stand with those who are against the punitive measures that the government is taking. And for William Ruto, I think this is now going to be the second time that he needs to have a streamlined a mindset in realizing that, you know, these citizens that he is representing, for him, he also needs to consider himself as a citizen. Apart from being the president, he is also a citizen. So when you see them coming on board and trying to say that we are going to take matters up in arms, this should be a, a strong wake-up call. It should be something that William Bruto takes with a lot of you know, you know, you know, keenness and, and, and he moves with a lot of caution in everything that he's going to do. And now the narrative has changed. If you look at those leaders who are you know, called the lieutenants of William Bruto, you know, even, even the way they are now coming out to talk in public has totally changed. You are expecting that, you know, you will be hearing them uh, maybe trying to be very, uh, very steadfast on marrying how they are in government. Right now, there is no kind of, you know, moment they are celebrating that they are in government. Because every time they make it to a given event, they only have one task which is very difficult to convince the people that things will be okay even though there is no you know you know substantial aspect of it that will convince the people that things will be better so the task is so big and for william bruto this is another wake up call if mount kenya comes up like this i think we might be heading for something we never expected and politically, this is how they always say the game is changing. This is how the, they always say the ground is speaking. So when you know the ground is speaking, people will go past their political alienation because the pain is a pain that is being felt by everybody. The other time, Keter was asking the, you know, Kalenjit, that can you show me a petrol station that is meant for the opposition and a petrol station that is meant for the government. You can't have something like that. So if it is a pain, it is a pain in a cross-sectional manner. High cost of living is cutting across. So I, I think um, this is another you know, wake-up call for this man from Sugoi. And he needs to actually give it more attention for him to survive a little bit further. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? What do you say? Let me uh, see you next. Have a great time.